numbers for sexually transmitted infections are high in Houston. Of all the cases Harris uh, Houston health officials are seeing, it's predominantly women of color who were most impacted. We had 2.5 million roughly people diagnosed with STIs in the last year. Since 2016, syphilis cases in women have increased by 128 percent. New infections rose from 1,845 in 2019 to nearly 3,000 in 2022. Cases involving women who passed the infection on to their baby during pregnancy soaring from 16 cases in 2016 to 151 in 2021. Action. I have decided to be abstinent. <laughs> you were on to something. I was listening to things you were saying. Not only did I hear the things you were saying, but then once I saw the news flash, Houston media, that uh, a whole lot is an outbreak of STIs going on in Houston. And it particularly pertains to my community. They said women of color. And I was like, yo, they got syphilis and they got syphilis on top of HIV and they having babies with syphilis and HIV. And I was like, yo, by the statistics in Houston right now, there are 92,000 people. Uh, diagnosed with HIV. I'm so sorry. I don't know anybody's names. There ain't nothing like that. I'm just saying to be aware to live in that type of place with that type of energy is terrifying. Hey, man, last episode, <laughs> I did say that. I was like, you know, well, even today, we need to have dick discipline. I say you got to have dick discipline. Yeah, I mean, I control the tally whacker, bro. You got to because I've also said this before too. Unwanted pregnancies are the fault of men. The reason why is because I can choose who I impregnate. And the only woman that I realistically, realistically, liability wise should be impregnating is my wife. Even I know people can say, well, shit goes south. I, I know people say <laughs> things go south. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, it, it's, it's a lot. The liability goes really crazy when you're having kids with somebody you're not married to. I mean, the whole one. Thing. Believing that I have options, it, it lets me say, hey, if this doesn't work, then I'll just do something different. It's very hard to make that transition when you have children involved, and I think that's irresponsible. I think that you're supposed to try to figure it out, but right now, man, I mean, when you just stop liking a person, when the when the respect and relationship is gone, then I think the relationship is gone. And so what are you supposed to do then? Like, I'm a firm believer, and don't go back. Like, once you're gone, you left for a reason. I think you better off. Once you find somebody, we, we were talking about this offline, but, you know, I, I got to go right to this. You know, finding a woman that you can mold, finding a woman that you can. Hey, some woman right now, she just got tricked like right it. now. You yeah, heard, that they you heard can, the word mold. That you said, can direct, guide, and elevate to spaces in their mind and how they function. But explain to them why, though. Like, you're not just saying this arbitrarily. Like, I'm trying to control your every person. Let me give you a prime example. What's up? And, this, and, and I got to go to my experience. Most of the women that I've been with over the span of many years, I've dealt with a lot of women that at least at, at base make $60,000 a year at, at base. Right, right, right. So like All of these women, when taking care of their own finance, were poor money managers, all of them. Women will come up here and say that they're good at it. They'll say they will, but most women that I know are not good at it. I'm getting somewhere. When I got to educate these women... Hey, you should do this with your money. Maybe you should do. Maybe you should think like this because this is how you need to function and do things. It always elevated them. Every woman that I got with, regardless of if she couldn't stay with me or not, I was able to elevate to a certain space because I was guiding her. And so the thing is, would when they you, co-sign that? Like just from their point of view, would they? They gonna always co-sign it behind doors, but they never collectively co-sign it because they're so communal and they want to run things. So it's like they want to dictate and have so much control. They'll lie. They'll say things like we really believe in the promiscuous woman. I think that the promiscuous woman sort of exists, but most women do fare better, do well under a one source that they can go to. What's your definition of promiscuous woman? A woman who's dating multiple men at the same time. When I was in high school, having, I had I had a belief system that I was like, "Hey, if I'm not, if I'm not a starter, and I'm not talking about the NFL, if I'm not a starter, I mean top five, you know, what I'm saying dead or alive, if I'm not, on your whole body ever, right. I don't want to deal with you. I don't want to be the sixth man. I don't want to come off the bench. I don't want to be the person, the afterthought. This was me when I was in high school, okay. And right now, in the world that we live in. Man, you're like begging for her not to have 50 bodies on top of her. 
like one of my homies said uh, once before, first beats best. You know, when you the first, you make it work. How do they know what's better? But we promoted this culture of uh, promiscuousness. Uh, and so that's how we going back. That's how we get back to the original start of this whole conversation is these STI, STD rates is that, you know, we are without any thought process out without any plan. We are out here wasting our bodies for short term pleasure. So when I have a conversation about value, right, scarcity determines value. And so if there's only one of me, then I'm like the rarest thing in the whole history of the world, right? There are more stars in the sky than there are me as a human person, like my entity. Right. And so I devalue myself on a daily basis. Every time, bro, I, I really like myself. And so ever since I was young, I knew that as soon as I decide to be with a woman, either I'm going to give her a baby or she might give me an STD or like... Whatever. She might go tell a nasty rumor just because she gets mad at me. Like women operate in a different space when they get mad at a man. They want to tear down your reputation. Yeah. Right. The first thing they want to do is destroy your character just so everyone knows I'm not with him because I didn't want to be with him, even though I broke up with you in the most politest, kindest way. Right. Right. That's true. It doesn't matter. Once they feelings are hurt, they don't respond in an emotional way. And so like me being a better person, me being a better man is to love women is for me to not touch them and to save them for their husbands. I agree with that whole Harley. And it doesn't make me, that doesn't make me, you, any of us less, less of a man by practicing that because we're, we're, we operating from the mental, you know, you're not operating from here. See, here's another thing, just the way women operate in the flesh and they operate in their feelings. Men operate with their other head, you know what I'm saying? And so that's a, that's a feeling. It may not be the type of feeling she experiences, but that's a feeling and an impulse that you got to think, okay, what are my options? Because I'm going to be honest with you. When you have a woman that is going to work with you, it does work best for you. I'm going to say this too. If we're going to say what we just said, you got to be anti-cheating. And this is coming from somebody who used to cheat a lot. And the reason why I say that is because, and I want everybody to get away from like the game of it all, the pleasure of it all, and how you come off looking. It's the kind of chaos that you cause no different than if you're single having babies out of well. Like it's about chaos. We got well, look, man, we got to operate a certain way when we get into the paper and having society stable. I think that conversation goes even deeper when you're cheating, when you're not telling the partner, when you're, when you're not telling the person that you love that you're seeing other people, you're not cheating like you're being malicious. You're putting her life on the line. I I deserve to know if you're going to have other partners, man, these STI things are real. It's like one in four herpes is out here, right? These things, they don't yes. go away. They are forever diseases. And I think that I have the right to know that if there's a possibility that I might catch something because we go to the clinic, we hold in hands, we love you, W, and we so happy because my first date now, like if I ever go on another date, if I ever get in another relationship, we going straight to the clinic. I want to see your paperwork, please. And if you don't want to go to the clinic, then, baby, I, I can't even deal with you. It's, it's a non-starter. And it's like we shouldn't even have to put that out as a protocol piece because you should just be doing this with your wife. But if you're not, even as you're getting with somebody that you're going to be with long term, I have this relationship with, you need to do what he just said. Like, I should know exactly what's in your file. Like, we that's for us. If we go together and so we both see each other's paperwork and then on Tuesday you, you, you walk into your old fling and you get the ding-a-ling and you don't tell me. And now I'm, I'm, I'm open again to all these things in this world. They're going to harm my body. You're not cheating on me. You're trying to hurt me. You're a malicious person. You're a nasty person. And when I'm pointing the finger, I'm pointing the finger at myself because I did that behavior. Yeah. Where I was like, man, I'm just out here doing my thing. You can't control me. It's not about controlling me. It's about loving the person that I'm having an intimate relationship with. And honestly, man, I'm going to say this, too, because I think we have to be very direct. And you got to tell your own story. If you're not telling your own story, how will anybody see or hear or think that you, what you're saying is valid? And we are two people that have had these life experiences to say this. And I'll say this. Out of all the women that I've had sex with, all the times I cheated, the best sex that I had was with my wife. You know, that's going to sound crazy. That's like a viral clip. I'm like, oh, this sounds ignorant, but follow me. What I'm saying is I wasted my time having sex when I didn't have to because of these temporary feelings when the best type of sex, the only type of sex existed that right there. was between me and my wife and I. You said temporary feelings. Sometimes you get mad. 
like sometimes I get mad at the person that I love. When I make a decision to create a life with a person, everything that happens from finding out that you're pregnant, Hold on, before you find out you're pregnant, you're you're romantically in love, right? It's all smiles and happy times, right? And you just humping like little rabbits, call me thumper, bang, 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 doing my thing. And then when it gets to the baby, you see the baby, and the baby's so beautiful, everybody's so happy. And then six months down the front line, you're you're arguing and you you can't stand her and she can't stand you. And all you really need is like some type of plan time out, not to go and explore sexual options. Just to breathe, baby. Let's and hey, you go do something fun, and I go do something fun. And can we be responsible people and like really love each other? Can we can we honestly love each other without intentionally harming the other person? Like respect. And when you say the the, the weenie discipline, you gotta tell you gotta tell your little man, bro. The things that we want to do for temporary pleasure, they ain't got nothing to do with this thing I'm building with this woman. Right, man. Now I want to get into this because this was a very racy topic but we gonna get into it i was when i was talking about the woman you could train you brought up something that i think a lot of men go through you said well i don't want her and so when i explored that you were like because she doesn't have pretty privilege and what that simply means is a lot of the women this is true if you look at a lot of the women that men end up marrying versus the women that they've dated on a certain spectrum they don't look the same a lot of times we looked at the wives being a little more plain jane and then we'll look at the women that you may have just had those flings with as these bad women. But what you have to understand is there's a reason for that. There's a correlation to how these women act and how those women act. You know, you do have to think when a woman is being approached all the time, she's being everybody is coming after her all the time and she understands that she has pretty, pretty privilege. She will utilize that. But here's the thing is, it's only so long that you're going to have a man spending money on you and he ain't going to want no cat. All right, man. There's a whole lot of poor people out there in the world. You don't want me to call you poor. My bad, dog. Economically challenged people. We ain't got that much money in your pocket. And you ain't got no money in your bank account, okay? You sell plasma just to get by through the week. There are millions of you. Last time I checked, like 7.9 million Americans sell plasma every, like twice a week just to get by, just to get by, just to get by. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a crazy stat. 7.9 million people I selling believe plasma. That. And, and, there are, and there are a lot of those buildings, you know what I'm saying, here in the city. Um, and that's not to say that women don't give it up for free too, but I'm just saying like, I think there's a reason why you see these type of women behave that's a certain way. And then if you see you're more plain Jane women, they're more wife material. And so when you get to this person who's selling plasma just to get by, right? This man is hungry. Like literally he wants, he's selling plasma to go buy a hamburger. Okay. And then he also wants some female attention, but he doesn't, he doesn't have a car. Right. He, man, the job that he works, he doesn't pay him enough money to sustain himself. He doesn't even have a place to live. And so when he gets the opportunity to engage in an intimate encounter with a woman, he ain't really asking too many questions, right? He's not, he's fin, he's finna dive head in because this is, in, in one year, this is the first woman who offered herself to him. In a year, this is yeah. the first woman that, and so he's going to say, no, I'm going to wait for the healthy woman, the good looking woman, the trainable woman. You're right. That's he's, true. He's going to say, thank you. That's true. And whatever headache she brings him, his head is going to be bent because he's so thankful that he gets a piece of cat uh, once every three months. And that's why we can't. <laughs> and that's why we can't lead with it. That's why you whatever you whatever you lead with, you kind of lose, you know, like and what I mean by that is, you know, if you start off a certain way, you typically do in that way. Like if you're leading off with a certain attitude and you never change that, you kind of you'll end off. Even if you're making a change, something's going to happen in that situation that's going to alleviate you from the direction you were going in. So if it's all about money. That's why I don't like the 50 50. Listen, we got a dead to 50 50 conversation. You got to understand something. Let's say you in a situation with your old lady and you making a million a year you make a million a year you fall off now she got to be the one to carry the weight on, on finance the real one gonna stay no matter what yeah it's gonna be a struggle because women don't want to see you operating less than them and because it's led with money that's why you have all these people thinking that you can actually go out here and just earn a six-figure income like that and so when you don't have any money at all right there because there's a lot of people having relationships and they ain't got no money Right. They're poor. Walmart employees are dating Walmart employees, whatever sector that you work in. You meet your coworkers. Y'all fall in love. You have this wonderful coworker, a coworker relationship. And then you figure out a hey, she got debt. She figures out you got child support and you have to navigate this relationship to the best of your ability. You have to have man when you ain't got nothing and she still loves you. 
if you have game, if you have, uh, when I say game, I mean, are you a personable guy? Can can you talk to a person? Can you have? Can you engage in an interesting conversation? Have you read a book in the last year, right? Have you seen something interesting? Have you ever done anything interesting? Your lived experiences, they matter. These, these All these things are negotiable when you meet a person. When you meet a person, she, she, you don't say, hi, I'm a lawyer. Hi, I just donated plasma. These questions, that's not how you lead. You're going to say something, it's going to make her smile. And then when she smiles at you, the conversation isn't ever going to go into the negative things. They're always going to stay on the positive. And so attraction is going to dominate most of our relationships. It's, it's going to lead me into to a woman who I know wants to have a conversation. I know that you're not interested in the things I'm interested in. Man, what that booty is so round. But, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with... Uh... You know, we you hear a lot in certain communities where we talk about men having purpose. You do have to have that. You have to be driven towards something to where you can have your own. And that woman needs to come into that environment. Like, you really never need to be in a situation where you're needing her. Yes, they're great helpmates. They're helpers. They need to enhance situations. But you really got to have a situation where, hey, okay, she dipped. I'm, I'm, I might stumble, but my pivot, I'm going to stay on it. You the know what I'm saying? The thing you just said right now, there's so many layers of, of tutelage that you have to go through just to get to that spot. And just to even have the idea of having discipline means you had to have some type of authority figure in your life and still discipline upon you. And then having that type of discipline gave you the ability to go have some lived experience based on a disciplined behavior. You were able to get a job. You were able to buy a car. You were able to establish yourself. All of these things are positive characteristics that are they're attractive to a woman. When a woman sees that you can get your life together, she's like, damn, that man has the potential to have a life with me. But I'm just saying the initial attraction, it starts when you see that shape. When you see those yoga pants, you're like, holy, <laughs> she is everything. And those yoga pants make me forgive so many things. I know we had an Alvar conversation and she said seven words. I know that, but I love hearing myself talk. So fuck it, I don't, de I don't deduct no points, okay? And damn, when, man, when we did it, oh my goodness, the the climactic effect was like on seven, eight, nine, eleven. She's fantastic. The areolas is perfect. They, oh my goodness, all these things. And so then when I see that she has some suspicious behavior, I just <laughs> forgive it. I just forgive it. Just forgive it. Let it go. Man, I'm not a jealous guy. Why would I be jealous for? I am confident in who I'm self. Yeah, I'm I'm a confident me, but she's still a whore. Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ, come on. And let me tell you this. Any real man worth his weight in gold that's going to protect you and put his life on the line for you, he's going to want you to be exclusive to him. He's going to want you to be exclusive to him. He's not going to want you to even think of someone else over him. Man, you better stop that right now. We're going to shut down the misogyny. You're controlling women's bodies. We, you can sleep with whomever. It doesn't matter. You can one through a thousand. Right. I'm going to love you anyway. You're just a princess. I don't have to have no standards because you can just be as irresponsible as possible. And I'm supposed to accept that. Right. Right. That's what she said. That. But but she told me to tell you you better not love yourself. That's what she told me to tell you <laughs> to you from her. But you know it's like because I'm worth it. So so let so let me let me ask you this. What's up? Are we supposed to let them get out of pocket like that? Are we supposed to check them? I'm trying to tell you that this whole thing is out of pocket because I'm out of pocket. Exactly. I love I women so much that I'm willing to forgive all the things that I know are wrong just because I want to get along with her. Yeah. Because I want her to be happy with me. Yeah. I don't want you to be happy with me. I want to I want to create a wonderful nation. I want to have a strong foundation for our family. I want my kids to be able to walk down the street and not worry about getting robbed. I want you to have the exact same positive experience. And to have that positive experience, we can't have no debaucherous ass nation, which means you got to put your pussy up. It means you got to put your titties up. Yeah. I, I know that you have the right to show them. I know that. But when you show them, it demoralizes their society because it, it just makes sex feel just so worthless. It makes me look at you just in a way where I'm like, man, everything about you is gorgeous and I still don't want you. It's like a Ferrari. 
You go buy a Ferrari. I don't. I don't. I don't own a Ferrari. I just like to watch YouTube channels that talk about Ferraris. And when they talk about Ferraris, they say as soon as you buy it in two weeks, it's back in the shop for two months. And not all of them having sex like that. That's the other part. It's like they lean, like you said. Why don't you know? Why aren't you reflecting your life in your music? You know, why aren't certain artists reflecting their life in their music? Why don't these women that's making all these breakup songs and all this, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Why they're not saying, was, why are they not talking about what's really going on behind closed doors or what they really want? You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. But they're, that, that's the other part. It's like, okay, this pretty privilege shit. Or, you know, hey, I can get my body to get the things that I want. They know that. And so they'll continue to do that until we say no. That's not acceptable. You're not doing that. That needs no. That needs to go away. That doesn't. That doesn't need to be outwardly public the way it has been. What I'm saying is because I value Ferraris. Like I'm going to maintain being a broken person. I'm going to do all the things that keep me a broken person, so that I can pursue a broken car, and so I can get a broken woman who's only going to hurt my feelings and send me to the Breakfast Club like Tyrese and cry on camera <laughs> and say that that's masculinity. It's not masculinity to continue to choose the wrong women. Tyrese is funny, dog. That's a defect if I continue to choose the wrong we women. We don't choose great mates. We typically, men, look, I, I said this too. Men really don't even know what they looking for and how to do it until post 35. Because you got to get the flight time. A lot of times when you young, because you lead so much with less when you young, you make the mistake picking the wrong mate. This information, this game that I'm giving up, might as well call me unk. You know what I'm saying? Like this information because... A lot of men don't talk about this. We'll get forms of it. We'll get forms of it through like when we dialogue about pimping, when we dialogue about certain things that have criminality to it, but we don't really put. That's why I think white men have excelled in the in the and all manosphere. those things. And when because like I, when you hear when there's a speckle of truth, when you hear some truth, because truth is universal, you're like, OK, I understand. But now if the truth doesn't end with love, is it the truth? Right. So if the truth is that women need guidance, but if the guidance ends with me having sex with her, is that love? That's what I'm asking, right? Because I'm supposed to be of guidance to women because I want them to be a good woman for their for their husband. And if I find out through conversation that you're not going to be my wife, but I still love the way that you look and my attraction leads me to lust, then I don't love you. And I just destroyed you That's for your true. future husband That's because true. I'm not a good man. That's true. And so because, <laughs> because I can't talk about the broke guys, I can only talk about the men who have the, the attributes to have women, that right. to have children right. and to have families because those are the men that women are seeking. Right. They will be a side chick to a man who has a stable family. That's because true. Because his stability is still powerful to her. That's true. His warmth keeps her warm. It keeps money in her pockets because this he has disposable income. This is a man of value. If he doesn't have any income, he has disposable knowledge because he's a man of character and substance. You have to add value to a person's life. And so when we start talking to this group of men, right, these very special men who add value, stop taking the most valuable thing from women and leaving them with some money. <laughs> True. Hey, man, that's true. And that's man talk. Like you have to have a responsibility and mindset to operate in that uh, space because you have to understand you're causing chaos any other way. Like if you really think about it, right, once you start, you know, once you start having sex with them, once you start uh, creating a space where they having babies, STDs, and you're not they're not under any type of provision they're not in under any type of roof they're going to go out and cause chaos they're going to do that she didn't like it when i said this but i was talking to my friend and i said like all the black women in houston they're attracted to a very a very specific type of black man and there's a black man there's a type of black man who has some muscles he drives a challenger a charger one of these types of uh these vehicles right and there's a select it's probably about a thousand of them and these thousand men have HIV, herpes, and syphilis, okay? And these women, they're all running. These thousand guys are smashing a thousand women, all of them. And now that's how the numbers are just going boom, 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 boom. Like, why hasn't he called me? And then some of these thousand men, they're gym bros, and they're doing each other also. <laughs> Which is how it's really going down, to be honest. And I know that that scenario... It might not be absolutely, it's, it's, it's a little hyperbolic, but when you understand that women are only going for a select few men where they say, he's a breeder, I want to choose him. They're not dealing with the men who, 
Because the men who, who who are pretending to be nice, they're not really nice. They're just hungry. So your point, man, when, when you when you were talking about galvanizing men, I think when men adopt this culture collectively, where we're not impregnating or having any type of relations with unwed women at all, they just they have to be in the pool um, until they get some some type of provision. Um, we eliminate that. Be fair with me though. Being a man who has the ability to have uh, lots of sexual conquests, like that has currency. It, it's a it's a type of clout. It's not just a type of clout for men. It's also a type of clout for women. Women, you love it when you know that I was with a beautiful woman. It drives you crazy, like that jealousy inside you. Like, I want to know what it is about him. They want to find out. See, but that's, that's the thing. It's like all the things that cause chaos have great elements to it. And that's we're gonna always find the good um, in things like when we're having all this blast, just pleasing ourselves and doing what we want to do. There is a brick wall at the end of that. It's 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 so linear to it because it's all based off feeling, you know. Ain't no brick wall. They're just gonna make, just gonna make another, another prep medication, huh? Oh, they they just gonna keep putting band aids on top of sores, huh? They just gonna smooth it over. Boy, you said Magic that. Johnson is the poster boy. You can get it and still have a happy life and become a billionaire. Shout out to Cookie. What's up? You said hey, you said a mouthful because it's like all those things aid in. You can do what you want to do. It's okay. You can do everything that comes to your mind. And it's like, no, you really can't do that at all because you see the problems that it causes. How do we make, man, you, you, you a cool guy. You got swag, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have this type of influence. How in the world do we make this shit culturally cool to be a responsible man, to be a disciplined man? Every nigga said he read Malcolm X, but don't nobody have the discipline to eat one meal a day and be a monogamous person? Well, you got to talk about the realities of the failures. Nobody's talking about the reality of the failure of any of these lifestyles. Like, if you look at the market right now, the thing that we relate to the most is black people's criminality. So if you look at, like, a drug game, all these things like you see a certain lifestyle that you're attracted to. But when you really get into like the real stories of the ups and downs and the things that these guys went went through, you know, you see the bad it causes, you see the chaos it causes. So we're really not talking about this. Listen, listen, I know what it's like to deal with multiple women and even multiple women at the same time. And you ain't being real player with yourself if you don't say that that's stressful. It is stressful dealing with multiple attitudes. Anybody that you're trying to say that you're presiding over or having provision for, it can be a very difficult thing. It's so much time. How many men could be millionaires, multimillionaires right now if they put more focus into their purpose instead of chasing whores? It's like when you put your when you put your mind into that, you put your focus into that, it becomes a thing because it's such a distraction. So it's like your best case, of, but you also have the carnal part. You you want you sex, sex is on the hierarchy of needs. So it's like what what scenario you, are you best in? You have to look at it like that. But when you start like these guys with the chargers and the muscles, like you say, like they're causing chaos and living in it too. The juice bros. Hey, look, <laughs> I, I, accountability matters. I'm in my videos. I talk about uh, uh, a hypothetical civilization where it's a post a, a, pop, a, a post apocalyptic. I still got my. <laughs> because you're a dad you had to go yeah. be a dad yeah. when you show up as a dad you show up in real time right right and so but in reality and not, and, not in, and not in no projected future i have to be the man that i want my sons to be i have to be the man that i want my, my my nieces to marry i have to be the man that i want to be the reflection in my community and sometimes i'm going to do some debaucherous ass deviant ass shit but i'll never promote that as you should do it too you should drink as much whiskey as me. You should sleep with as many women as me. But if I'm going to say you shouldn't, then maybe I shouldn't also. Exactly. But I can, you got to really like this is the issue with a lot of messengers or people that are in church. It's like I'm saying this because I should, but I'm not living this. So you don't really believe what you're saying. Like when I'm saying things, even in my growth. Hey, answer this question. For go me, ahead, please. If I am a sexual deviant, am I supposed to publicly tell people that I'm a sexual deviant, whatever the deviancy is? No. Should I, I should go talk to my pastor or a therapist or somebody, but I shouldn't go on TikTok and say, I'm free now. <laughs> yeah, you. It, I, I think, listen, here's the issue with 
the LGBT movement. The LGBT movement to me, besides protecting a demographic of people, made it to where we could say we can talk about explicit things out loud because we can. And it's like, no, all all activity, no matter what it is, when it's between two consenting adults needs to always be behind closed doors it should never be out in public so that goes back to debauchery which you're saying that in some way is a promotion of that because it's like hey promoting debaucherous behavior is how right. we get this culture where stis are normality it's almost a rite of passage when you get your first sti it's like welcome to the sexual marketplace and what's so sad is they're in us talking this truth and talking about morality. There are those that will most certainly find this offensive because you think that you're being oppressed in some way. No, we have to understand the difference between real oppression and morality. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.